except Michael was determined to prove to the current generation of fans that he was larger than life during his day and still larger than LeBron James, the player many consider his equal, if not superior. So Michael presented his story, not the story of the last dance, as our coach Phil Jackson billed the 97-98 season once it became obvious the two Jerry's, that's owner Jerry Reisendorf and general manager Jerry Krause, were intent on breaking up the gang no matter what happened. David Kaplan joins us on the Goodyear Hotline, brought to you by Goodyear, making the plays that move you forward. Goodyear more driven. Cap, what do you think of those comments? It's getting juicy, Cap. Really juicy. Number one, I was just talking to Evan off the air. I mean, how much rent does Michael pay Scotty in his head? I mean, come on, man. You're one of the top 50 players, and you continue to embarrass yourself. Uh, it's crazy because – I've been around Michael a significant amount away from the basketball court. This dude is the most confident human being in the history of the world. I mean, it's not close. I don't believe Michael had any interest in releasing those videos because he had to make sure that the new generation of young fans knew he was better than LeBron. Michael knows he's better than LeBron. LeBron's a great player. He may be the second best of all time. Michael is the GOAT, and it isn't close. Well, okay, Cap. So, look, some things you say in order to sell a book, obviously I think that is one of those things because that's a huge debate that everybody gets into, but I'm not going to let that be the real narrative here. Let me ask you a real question. Being a guy I'm with that you, Cap. played in Chicago, <laughs> being a guy that played in Chicago, I spent time around MJ and Pip as well. Do you think there's anything at all to what Pip said about how the ego of Jordan can sometimes outshine what other players on this team have done to help him win championships. Do you, do you feel Pip at all in that capacity? Um, I don't because here was Michael's perspective. And I've asked him this question, and he gives you this the same answer every time. Michael truly believed if you couldn't play at his level, not in terms of talent, in terms of want to, will to win, competitiveness and then you had to be really really good that he just didn't have a use for you and he believed he knew what the level of commitment and intensity was to win in a city where we don't win a whole lot till they came along and if you don't want to play that way that's fine then get out don't have anything to do with us but if you're going to be with me you're going to play one way and we all know who the king of the castle was. Yeah, and, and you know, Cap, for me, I, I have a relationship with both of these guys. They, they brought me up in the sports world when I was a young, wild kid running around New York City. And, and so, in the end, I just feel like Scotty is reaching a lot in these situations for a lot of different reasons. Um, Michael's Michael. I mean, if it was built around him and that was the last dance and that's what it was going to be, then that's what it was going to be. But what type of rift has the last dance caused amongst not only Scottie Pippen, but just other teammates in general that feel a certain way about the way they might have been portrayed in the last dance? Uh, I, I think a lot of guys were like, yeah, whatever. I mean, that's the way it was when they were playing and that they told the true story. But, you know, I remember, I don't know, when did the first excerpt of the book come out? Five months ago, four months ago, where Scotty made some comments about Tony Kukoc or why Tony got to take the last shot in a particular game, and he claimed it was that Phil Jackson, it was racially motivated. And I called, Tony's a good friend of mine. I play golf with him. I called Tony. I said, have you heard what Scotty said today? No, tell me. He goes, Scotty and I are really tight. We're boys. I said, uh, you're not going to like this. I read him the quote. He's like, what? No way he said that. Yes, it's in his book. And Tony, I asked, I offered him to come on the air. No, I'm not getting involved in this. I can't believe he's continuing to do this. Yeah, Tony was more than a little hurt by Scotty as opposed to the way he was perceived, and at times, at the beginning of the relationship, treated by Michael. Cap, you know what's crazy about this whole thing, for all the things that Pip has just started to say, and will say more, I'm sure, in his book, Unguarded, that will be coming out soon. 
I guarantee Michael Jordan doesn't even care. That's he what makes it. that's what makes MJ MJ. It, whatever. I, I truly feel that way, don't you? A hundred percent that Michael, if he's listening right now, he's drinking his coffee, laughing, going, I still I'm still the topic of conversation and I can't stop it. It's phenomenal. I guarantee you he doesn't care. He's laughing at it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.